Hello and welcome to the 47th video in this series, Programming a Chess Engine in C. So this will be the last video where I just talk and we'll get, I promise in the next video we'll get around to programming some code. But I've been trying to think of the best way to go about doing things now. And I think I need to just very quickly talk about, like I did a few videos ago before we started generating moves, I need to talk again about the direction we're taking now. So we're going to need to implement very basically to get the program actually searching a couple of functions and one of them is called a search function and when the GUI says okay we set the depth tell you how much tell the engine how much time there is to move and we set the time or depth limit for the search we then call we'll call a search or a think function or something like this and inside this function we'll do something called iterative deepening because when the engine searches it doesn't just simply say, OK, I'm going to search to depth 8 and then just call alpha beta searching to depth 8, subtracting 1 from the depth each time it calls alpha beta, as we saw in the explanation of the minimax or alpha beta tree. What we actually do is iterative, it's called iterative deepening, and that basically is we search to depth 1. When we've finished, we have a look how long it took and try and estimate whether we can complete the next depth, then search to depth 2, then search to depth 3, and search to depth 4, and so on. And this when you first read about this, when you first start programming an engine, this appears at first to be very, very inefficient. And you might think, well, why don't I just search straight off to depth 8, let's say. Well, you've probably have seen in the previous video on alpha beta, I had a tree for white where you had the, white had the choice of two moves. And most of the tree in the second move was cut off because it already became clear that black could minimize below what white could achieve from the first move. Imagine, though, that white tried the second move first, then we'd have evaluated all of the nodes on that tree, and nearly all of the nodes then for his other move, which was the move he made first in the video, because, and, and we would have ended up not cutting many nodes off at all. And alpha beta is massively dependent on move ordering. If you, the better the move, if you search, always search the best moves first, then you'll end up cutting off the most nodes and get the best branching factor. So as you iterative deepen, so as you search through the depths, you get a couple of things. You get a, what's called a PV, a principal variation, which is up to the depth that's been searched, the optimum line. So when you start a new depth, the first thing you do is search down this optimum line, because it's most likely still the optimum line, and you get a lot of cutoffs. And you also, and you'll see as we go through programming, you store various heuristics, so what are called killer moves, you used to make a history table of scores for moves that have caused alpha cutoffs, killer moves or for beta cutoff moves. You order captures usually first before quiet moves because captures more often than not decide whether a position's worth searching further or not. And all this information gets refined and refined as you go through the depths and you actually find that it makes the search more and more efficient. So iterative deepening actually is an advantage, becomes an advantage over just setting a depth straight away. And for time management, really, it's the only way to do things because it's very hard to estimate how long it would take you to search to a certain depth. OK, so I've rambled on enough about that. But So in search, basically, we have our iterative deepening where we start with depth 1, and then this is all very, very loose suedo code. And we call alpha beta and then increase the depth and call alpha beta again with depth as the argument. I'll just put depth in here as well. And of course, here we've got depth minus 1. So the things we're going to need to program in the alpha beta search, actually, to get it working, we're going to need to have a function in it programmed which can detect whether the position is a repetition. If it's a repetition, we're going to just return draw zero, because there's no point in going down a line we've already looked at. And if we're going for a repetition, it doesn't, we don't need to look for threefold. We can just look for a once repetition. We return a zero, and then the engine can decide, compared with its other scores, where it's actually worth going for a line with a repetition. The next thing will be some tricky code. We need to find, and I've spelled that incorrectly, whether we need to interrupt the search. And that might be because we've run out of time that we set for the move, but it also might be because the GUI has sent us a command to tell us to stop searching. Now, at the start of this series, I said that we were going to do the in-out and the thinking on separate threads. Well, I've decided now for simplicity that we'll actually do it another way. We'll have some code in here which uses um, 
peeks at it, whether anything's inside the standard input, and then has a look at what it is, and then breaks out of, and then breaks out of the loop if necessary, if quit or stop was sent or something like that. And this code is a bit tricky, and I'll be using some code that was posted very kindly on the Winboard forum. And I'll put in, because somebody's made a comment, I've seen that the code at the moment compiles for Linux as well, so I'll put in the Linux and the Windows versions of this code. So we need something that can check whether we need to quit. Then generate moves is OK. And now the next maybe interesting part, I've got something here called Pro PV Move. If you look at TSCP or some of the simple engines out there, a lot of them use what's called a triangular PV array to um, every time there's an alpha move uh, seen, every time a move gets better than alpha, it gets put into a triangular PV array. And this can be used then when the search is finished or at the end of every depth to print out the best line to that depth that the engine has so far. Another way of doing it is to use a single array, um, much like Gerbil in Bruce Moreland's engine. But actually, I'd like to do it a third way, and that is we're going to create a small hash table which is uh, which will store positions, position keys, and then the move. And the idea here is every time we finish the search, if we improved alpha in this search, then we had a PV move, so we'll store that best move in our hash table. It'll only be a small hash table. And that allows us, if people want to, at the end of the series, to actually extend the engine and improve it a bit by using a hash table for getting um, scores that we've already had, say, for a certain position, so we don't research the same position twice. But that comes much, much later. But I thought it might be a nice way to get the principal variation that the engine has searched without doing the extra work of a triangular PV array, because we can simply probe the table when we finish our search. And don't worry about how this is going to work now. It will become clear when we start programming it. The next thing we'll need is we'll need a function that actually does what's called ordering the PV move. You remember in def.h that we have our move structure has the move and it also has a score. And this is the reason. In move generation, most of the scores will be set and they will be using the history and the killers and things like this. But if we find that we get a, a, a for the current position in alpha beta somewhere in the tree, that we have a move that beat alpha when this position was previously searched, then we'll search this move first, hoping that the move also will at least beat alpha, and if not, give us a beta cutoff. So we'll have a small function that we'll have to build called order PV move. Then we'll do our normal loop moves and do our is it a beta cut, is it an alpha cut, as we've seen, spelled that incorrectly as well, in previous in the previous videos. And after the loops have finished, we'll ask, did we make a move or not? If we didn't and we're in check, then it's mate. And if we did, if we didn't and we're not in check, then it must be stalemate, so we return a zero. And here I've said already, if we improve alpha, we store our PV move, and then we return alpha. And that's our alpha beta search then working. So that's it for this video. It's just something to get an idea around the fact that we're going to, in the next few videos, be writing these various functions and setting up some of the structures in def.h to be able to Impl then implement our alpha beta without constantly springing back out of it into another video to add a function in. I'm going to prepare all of these functions first and then we'll start writing the iterative deepening and the alpha beta. So thanks very much for watching. I promise that we'll get on with some code in the next video and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.